Welcome to another episode of Daily Hope. Today we are in John chapter 20 and I'm really excited to get into it. So before we get started, please make sure you like this video. And if you haven't already subscribed to our channel, let's pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, I thank you, God. I thank you for just what an amazing word you're going to give to us. What an amazing message that you're going to give to us today through this chapter. We praise your name. We thank you, Holy Spirit, for guiding us into all truth. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen and amen. So, John chapter 20, verse 1 starts with this. Now, on the first day of the week, Mary Magdalene went to the tomb early while it was still dark. So, by this point, um, Jesus has already been crucified, which you already know because you read yesterday's chapter, right? If you haven't finished John chapter 19, please make sure you take some time to finish that chapter. So now on the first day of the week, Mary Magdalene went to the tomb early while it was still dark and saw that the stone had been taken away from the tomb. Then she, then she ran and came to Simon Peter and to the other disciple whom Jesus loved and said to them, They have taken away the Lord out of the tomb and we do not know where they, where they have laid him. Peter Peter therefore went out and the other disciple and were going to the tomb. So they both ran together and the other disciple outran Peter and came to the tomb first. I think that's funny that the writer John makes it a point to say that he outran Peter. Then he stooping down and looking and saw the linen cloths lying there, yet he did not go in. Then Simon Peter came following him and went into the tomb and he saw the linen cloths lying there. And the handkerchief that had been around his head, not lying, not lying with the linen cloth, cloth, but folded together in the place by itself. Verse 8. Then the other disciple who came to the tomb first went in also, and he saw and believed. For as yet they did not know the scripture that he must rise again from the dead. Then the disciples went away again to their own homes. But Mary stood outside by the tomb, weeping, and as she wept, she stooped down and looked into the tomb. And she saw two angels in white sitting, one on one at the head and the other at the feet, where the body of Jesus had lain. This guys, this is an amazing picture right here. This I don't. This is an amazing picture because here we have a tomb. We have that the place where his body had been laid was laid, and then you have two angels that are sitting at each end. If you know your Old Testament. This is, um, this is reminiscent. They had, in the Old Testament, after Moses delivers the, the children of Israel out of Egypt, they had something called the tabernacle. And it was a place, it was, it, it was a place where God, where God dwelled. Pretty much it was a portable temple, right? And it would go with them. And it was always at the center of the encampment because God wanted to live there. So he said, hey, build me a tabernacle and I'm going to live there. Now, more specifically, in the inner part of the tabernacle was the Ark of the Covenant, which had Aaron's rod, and it had the Ten Commandments. And in this, in this Ark, and the Ark of the Covenant had like, had a, had, had a, I forget what it was, but it was, it's called the Mercy Seat. It was made out of gold, and it was on top of it. And at each end of this Ark of the Covenant were, was an angel, an angel where the wings were touching, and it was looking inward. This that is the place, the Ark of the Covenant and the Mercy Seat. That is where that would that would that's where the presence of God was. This is where the presence of God was. Now, if you remember back um, back a few chapters, Jesus is talking with the woman at the well, right? And the woman says, "You know, you Jews, or you know, uh, my people say that we worship on the mountain." And you guys say that you got to go to a synagogue or a temple to worship. And then Jesus says, there's, there's going to come a time when it doesn't matter where you go, but people are going to, but the Father is seeking those to worship in spirit and in truth. So you won't have to go anywhere to encounter God because that living water is going to be inside of you and God himself is going to live in you. So worshiping does, is not about going to anywhere. Worshiping is about acknowledging that God is within you. And, and, and you have access to his presence at all times. Amen. This is the picture that we see right here where there is an, we're in the tomb where Jesus' body once laid. It's a picture. It's a picture of 
the Ark of the Covenant, right? And what was inside the Ark of the Covenant? Ten Commandments. What are the, what's the Ten Commandments? The Word of God. So in, in, in ancient Israel, when they were traveling, going to the Promised Land, this is the place where the Israelites had to go to encounter God. That's a place they had to come and have communion with God, and, and they would do the sacrifices there. Like That was their place to have that encounter with God. And that's when like the cloud of glory would come and His presence would dwell there, right? That's the picture that we're seeing, but what we're seeing is it's not like that anymore. It's not like that anymore. We see, we see this place where Jesus was laid, laid, and we see these two angels. It is, it is a picture of the Ark of the Covenant, where the presence of God is supposed to be. But we look, in, but Mary looks inside the tomb, and what happens? Jesus isn't in there. In other words, the presence of God isn't in there signifying saying right when G- remember when Jesus died and the veil was torn in two all of this is signifying that God is no longer in a place but now people through Jesus right Jesus said I am the way the truth and the life no one comes to the father except through me now every single one of us when we accept Jesus as our lord and our savior and we're baptized we now have this free access to the Holy of Holies. We have free access to His presence, amen? We don't have to go to the Ark of the Covenant or the place where the Ark of the Covenant, no, because God's not there anymore. Now God can live inside of us through the Holy Spirit, amen? That is good news, guys. That, we're, we're, we're literally witnessing the transition from the Old Testament covenant to New Testament coming through the blood of Jesus Christ. But guys, it gets better, it gets better. Then they, said, then they said to her, woman, why are you weeping? She said, because they have taken away my Lord. I do not know where they have laid him. I don't, she's like, I don't know where Jesus is. Now, when she has said this, she turned around and saw Jesus standing there and did not know that it was Jesus. Jesus said to her, woman, why are you weeping? Whom are you seeking? She supposing him to be the gardener said to him, Sir, if you have carried him away, tell me where you have laid him, and I will take him away. Jesus said to her, Mary. She turned and said to him, Rabbani, which is to say teacher. Jesus said to her, Do not cling to me, for I have not yet ascended to my father, but go to my brethren and say to them, I am ascending to my father and your father, and to my God and your God. Jesus right here is... is, is, is giving them and reminding them about the access of, you know, Jesus Jesus didn't just say, hey, I'm going back to my father. He said, no, I'm going back to my father. And because of what I did, he's your father too. I'm going to my father, but because of what I did, he's also your father. Mary thinks that he is the gardener. Jesus has restored what was lost in the garden. We talked about a couple of a couple of devos ago, right? Jesus came to restore that relationship. God has never ever been okay with this separation between him and his creation, him and his children. He's never been okay with it. Jesus was always the plan from the from the moment Adam and Eve sinned. God's plan was was for Jesus to restore what had been lost in the garden. And now we have the empty tomb where God's presence, where people don't have to go to a tabernacle or an ark and a covenant. No, no, God's not there anymore. Now God, through His Holy Spirit, can it now can have communion, direct communion. Nothing separate. No veil is separating. No demons can keep you from Him. No circumstances can keep you from accessing the presence of God and becoming a child of God through Jesus Christ. And he has restored that. And it's not a coincidence, it's not an accident that Mary thinks that Jesus is the gardener because Jesus is the gardener. He is. He, Jesus, in, Paul says it, Jesus is the second Adam. What Adam lost, what the first Adam lost, the second Adam has regained. Amen? 
And this is amazing and this is glorious. Guys, we cannot take this for granted. The fact that, you know, we same thing with the woman with, with, with the woman at the well, right? Where he gives us his living water, where we literally have a well, a well inside of us, where we can go as deep as we want if we choose it. Amen. So please, 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 please remind yourself and recognize that Jesus through his Holy Spirit, lives inside of you, wants to have communion. Listen, we just read, we just read yesterday his crucifixion. It was a brutal, agonizing, torturous crucifixion. He paid that price so that you can know him to, excuse me, he paid that price so you can know him today. Amen. Let's pray. Father, help us to really value the sacrifice, God. Really value what you have paid for. You paid for our lives with your very blood, with your very body. You gave it for us, God. So help us to recognize, to know it, God. Not just believe it, to know it in our hearts, God, that you paid for us. What a loving God you are that you would give your lives for us. We praise you and we honor you for that. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen and amen. If you haven't already, please make sure you like this video and subscribe to our channel. Also, in the description box, there is a link to um, our reading plan so you guys can follow along. And also, at the end of the video, there's a giving link. And please consider becoming a monthly supporter of Daily Hope. Last but not least, I want to I wanna hear what, what, what you got out of this chapter. What was your favorite verse or what was your takeaway? I love Love reading those. And before I let you go today, I want to remind you that people are our heart, generosity is our opportunity, excellence is our spirit, smiling is our favorites, and Jesus is our Lord. We'll see you tomorrow for John chapter 21.